I've received something in the mail today. It's uh, something I purchased off of eBay, sort of sight unseen. I saw it for maybe six dollars and a couple bucks of shipping and I decided I wanted it. So it's this here. This is an IBM PC compatible joystick. Uh, it's a very basic one, just two buttons and a stick. It's an analog stick, so be good for flight simulators and the like. And I liked the way that it sat in the hand. It looked good. Usually a joystick is a big flight stick style instrument. You've got a whole takes up a whole chunk of your desk. This one looks like I could use it in midair, which might be nice for the vintage gaming recording that I want to do with the laptop that I par purchased for these old DOS games. So I thought I'd give it a shot for only six dollars, why not? But I got it today and it, it does have some issues that I'd like to try and fix. First off, it's it's a lot lighter than I thought and a lot cheesier build. Mind you, it is no name joystick brand joystick. So, I suppose I shouldn't have expected much. I got the impression from the beigeness and the, the shape of it and everything. I, I sort of thought that it might have been some sort of one of those respectable 90s companies that made things in a very business-like fashion. It appears to be just some cheap Chinese junk. I was attracted by the cool steel ball that was exposed for the joystick pivot. Now, it's probably the same thing that's on every other joystick on the market, but I thought that looks pretty neat. I'd like it. And I like the stubby stick still, so I figured even if it's kind of cheesy, it might be worth it. Also, um, it's a little strange in the way that it moves. This stick has eight distinct locations that it stops at. You can put it in between, but it wants to fall into those locations. You can see, if I just try and go in each cardinal direction, it very easily moves into those positions. But this is a lot harder than this, and the reason for that is certainly because there's multiple springs involved. So, there's a deeper problem though, and I'll probably cut in a video here showing what it looks like, but it won't calibrate. The output from this joystick when I plug it into the PC is just a total mess. It's all over the place. And I know it's not anything wrong with the game port because I just purchased a USB to game port adapter and I tested it with the Gravis gamepad, which works perfectly now, which is a shame because it means the game port on my laptop is broken, but what can you do? This one just spits out random gibberish, just noise all over the place. There's something wrong with it. Given how simple these are inside, typically, it's probably just a dirty potentiometer. So I'm going to see if I can open it up, clean this up, and get better performance out of it. I actually already disassembled this earlier and started getting into it and then decided to do the video. So most of the screws are already out, plus the really irritating little plastic clip. So I'm just going to take out the one screw that's left still and put this back in so it would just hold together so I could demonstrate what it looked like. In case you managed to get one of these, this is the other part that holds it together. Plastic tab here. Let's press that in a little bit. There we go. And we can just. We can just. Okay. Nope. There we go. Okay. So that's the mechanism. And it's a very simple mechanism. There's probably a name for this sort of assembly. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it might be a gimbal. But uh, let's see if my camera will focus on it for you. There we go. So you can see how it works. We've got an x-axis and a y-axis. And so the stick, the stock coming down from the joystick, sticks to each one of these so that it can track but has freedom in that direction. So each of the axes only has to worry about its particular axis. Also, I like how the springs work. Again, this is, I'm fairly certain this is fairly pretty normal, but I still like the mechanism. When you push this way, it moves that wing and stretches the string, spring in that direction. Move that way, it stretches that wing. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different parts, plus the springs, plus this, to make it all happen. Not bad. It's kind of a, it's a clever design. So on top, we've got these trim controls for adjusting the, the center position. So if you were Say you were playing a flight sim and, and your plane needed to just pull up a little bit all the time. If you just pulled that down a little bit, the plane would just start pitching up and continue pitching up. Now, really, although these look like the trim controls on an airplane, I think this is actually because analog joysticks were terrible. And this was how you forced it into calibration. But the mechanism for how that works is fascinating. If we look at the potentiometer there, when I move this, it rotates, rotates the mount for the potentiometer in relation to the joystick gimbal mechanism. It's very clever. It uses a bunch of separate parts and yeah there's a lot of stuff going on there I 
offhand, I don't really know how the geometry of that works. I kind of want to take it apart and find out. I kind of really don't. We have a PCB here, but I can tell you even without taking it out that there's no electronics, no active electronics, certainly. Maybe there's a resistor or something, but I doubt it. The only reason that's there is to hold a couple of tactile buttons for the uh, fire keys. These are 100k ohm potentiometers. So with this in the middle, the resistance between this tab and this tab is 50,000 ohms. When I push it this way, it becomes something more like 25,000 ohms. When I push it this way, it becomes something more like 75,000 ohms. This is why you had to calibrate these sticks, because this is a single value, a single analog value that's being used to determine a bidirectional analog input. So in order to calibrate the stick, when you leave it in the center and then press a button, your machine reads these, and because of the position of the trimmers and because of the inaccuracy of these potentiometers, which have a, a tolerance to them, this might be sitting at not 50K, but 52, or 52.235. So when you calibrate it, your machine reads the current value on these and says, okay, that's center, and anything going up from that is a positive axis, and anything going down from that is negative on the axis. And the reason that your machine has you move the stick in a complete circle is so it can find the extents. So you start here, and the machine reads it and goes, okay, center is 52.235 here and 53.108 here. Now you move it all the way to the upper left, and it measures them and goes, okay, that's 75.6 and 74.9, and then you move it down here and it goes, okay, it's 24.95 and 25.16. And now you know how these potentiometers really behave, not how they behave in theory. The fortunate thing about this is it's so simple there really isn't much to diagnose, okay? The stick input on the PC is freaking out. Well, the stick itself isn't moving. It's certainly not moving enough to result in that much motion. So really this only leaves us two possibilities. The potentiometers themselves are dirty or the wiring is bad. These joints look fine to me. They're not coming off. The wires could be broken internally, but I doubt that they are. I'm going to get some potentiometer cleaner. I'm just going to go ahead and gung-ho, go for it, and we'll see what happens. And I'll take a video afterwards and see what the calibration output looks like. We're back here on the stage of history, and I have my pot cleaner. So here we are. This is Deoxit Fader Cleaner. This is, I think, I think this is the high-end version. I think there's a high-end and a low-end. This is the expensive stuff, I think. Let's pick out a map first. There we go. I don't think this will harm the surface on my desk, but I also just don't want to wipe up the grease. And let's make this easier on ourselves. Pop this out. Here we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and just flip it around. Flip it over. Flip it around. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to Blast a little canned air in there, see if I can get some of that moisture out. Okay. So that will probably do the job. So I'll put this back together, demo it, see how it works. I've just realized that I forgot to take a video of it before I fixed it. Fixed. We'll find out if I fixed it. So you'll have to take my word for it that before I did this, when I plugged it in, it was just jumping all over the place. Random output. So, we'll see what we got. Alright, here we go. Okay, now, let's just move this. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not encouraging. Still issues. Let's go to the settings and calibrate it. Okay, we're centered. Okay. And we're having problems. You know what might be going on? I'm realizing something. Let's take a look when I move this very, very slowly at how the cross hatch there moves. That's vaguely going right, and then it comes around. It comes around, comes around. There's a possibility these are not 100k ohm resistors and potentiometers. It's possible 
that there's something much lower or higher and that we're actually traversing a much much wider gamut of voltage or resistance than we're supposed to be. I think this stick is simply moving too fast for the computer to queue up with. So we'll get a voltmeter and we'll find out whether that's the case. So to read the value of a potentiometer if it's not stamped and these ones don't seem to be all you have to do is read across these two outside tabs. So since we think that this is a 100k ohm or at least that's what it ought to be we'll go ahead and set this to the 2000k ohm range make sure our probes work okay and here we go there and there and I'm getting nothing nothing okay it must be going in the wrong direction I think it's actually very high not very low let's try here Twenty mega. Wow. You know, I've forgotten to unplug it from the PC. I don't think that's affecting things, but let's find out. All right. Now we're unplugged for sure. Let's measure again. Hmm. Well, ten. Wait, wait, wait. We're going down. One point three mega ohm. Okay, so it's uh, it's thirteen hundred k. Let's see if the other one's the same. So I was wrong about it being twenty mega ohms. That was including the resistance from the computer. Thirteen hundred k ohm pot. Why would they do that? I'll do some research. My understanding is that these were supposed to be supposed to be hundred k. We'll be back. This is the video I'm using just for audio for the computer. Alright, so let's look up IBM game port on Wikipedia. Okay. Pin 3 here is noted as X axis for joystick 1, 0 to 100 k ohms. Let's see if we've got anything else here. Analog channels send voltage into line through a potentiometer in the controller 100,000 ohms and into a capacitor. So yeah, that's definitely wrong. Let's try this one. Can we get a schematic for one of these? Variable 0 to 100k ohm. There they are. So this is for a gamepad. So this is using push buttons in order to create the joystick inputs. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, yes. Here's your up, here's your down. Your up connects a 50k, so middle of the range, and your down connects 100k. So, okay, we've got three different references here, uh, including schematics for building one, demonstrate, yes, that should be 100k ohm. I don't understand why this isn't 100k ohm. It seems to me that the only answers are that it was designed for use with machines that had an incredibly wide calibration tolerance, or it's just simply built wrong. I don't know what else to think. Now, these are standard components, these potentiometers. I could disassemble this and put the correct pots in there. And I think that, just out of pure curiosity, I think I'm probably going to do that and see if I can make this thing work. I don't know if I actually have them here, though. If, if I have some 100K pots, I'll go ahead and do the swap -a -roo. But if I don't, then I'm probably just going to call this a, a loss. Let's see what we have. So this is about where things started going wrong. First I had to measure the size of the pot, I had to figure out how it was mounted into the plastic chassis, and then I had to play with that, and then I had to fight with that, I had to start taking out more and more screws, which is already where a project is going wrong. They're little tiny fiddly screws, so I had to really get in there with a smaller driver, and they're stuck in the plastic good and trapped into the gimbal, so finally got it apart, and I couldn't figure out how to get the pot out of the plastic bracket that it's mounted in. It, it, it seems to have a screw head on it, but I couldn't tell if it was screwed in place or glued or what. 
So I, I thought maybe it was uh, had a thread on it, some sort of custom job. Never seen that before, but uh, maybe, right? So I figured I'll try unscrewing it, screw it out of the plastic chassis. So I got a screwdriver and I started screwing it. And it only has a three-quarter turn of rotation, so I had to start trying to back it off. And I just kept fighting with it and fighting with it and, and turning it. And nothing was going. And then finally got the idea, after trying over and over and over, I thought, maybe it just pries off. Yeah, sure enough, it just pries off. So it came right off as soon as I realized that was the situation. But then it's necked. It's got two different shaft sizes. I've never seen this before. So I measured them and I started looking at the different parts of it, trying to figure out how they fit together, and it seems like it necks down inside this plastic part. So i got to get one with a step chassis. So I got on Google and got on DigiKey and started looking and looking and looking and looking and looking and reading data sheet after data sheet after data sheet, and I just spent 20, 30 minutes just digging and digging and digging. So where'd that get us? For every project like this ends, a bag full of parts you're never going to waste the time on. This is, uh, look at this mess. This was six dollars. This isn't worth my time. If they were mounted in some sort of reasonable fashion, if I could have just popped them out from the outside, I'd order new ones, glue them in place, and Bob's your uncle, but I have no time for this. So, call it a failed project, but I hope we got something out of the video, and hey, you know, in the process of making this one, I thought, maybe I should tear apart one of these guys, digital one. I got this cheap piece of junk from Interact, a Raider Pro. This is uh, definitely one of the worst sticks I've ever seen, so if I can't get it back together, no big deal. But if it is digital, if it's got rotary encoders, maybe we'll learn something about how they work, and it, hey, maybe it's interesting enough to put an oscilloscope on. So. Maybe out of this video, we'll get another video. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed it.